Hi, I'm Nigel Griffiths from the Advanced Technology Centre in the UK, part of IBM Europe. This movie is about the hardware management console release 7, or HMC7 as we techies like to say, and this is the console used with the Power 5 and Power 6 based System P machines. This console allows us to manage the machines from a PC-like device running this specialised software. We can connect up to 64 System P machines to our console and create up to 256 logical partitions. The console connects to the service processor in the back of the machine. This allows us to bring the machines up and down to create logical partitions, allocate resources like the PCI slots, the CPUs and the memory. It also lets us do things like dynamically changing the logical partitions while they're actually running. And now it also lets us do this partition mobility. In this movie we're going to look around the interface, some of the new things and the new way of working with HMC7. The first thing we have to do is to log on to our machine. And this is the uh, host name of our machine. It just happens to be HMC7. That was just pure luck. We immediately find out that we know the machine is basically good, but we have got some serviceable events here. Well, let's log on to our HMC7. We need to log on. I'll do that now. It's made it full screen, and I'll just shrink that back down. Day. and there we have our HMC. The first thing you've noticed of course is that this is all browser based now rather than having to install the WebSM interface if we want to work at it on our workstation rather than going to the hardware management console at 7 using its uh, local screen. The next thing you'll notice here is that we have some ready information for finding out some more. We've got the uh, operations guide here and we've got all the online information here as a web browser, we can go straight into that if we want, it saves us looking around and trying to find that uh, remotely. Up here we find the uh, most interesting things, managed systems, let's look at servers directly here. I only have one machine connected to this HMC at the moment, it happens to be a Power 5 based machine, a 550Q. And we can see here that uh, it's operating and uh, how much fuel resource there is available to it. Now if we want to do an operation on a particular machine, we have to go in at this level. If we select the machine, we'll find a little item will come up here in a second. Now we find that we can either go to these tasks, and these are the operations we can perform on this particular selected resource. Or we can click on the little arrows here and we get the same list. Or they actually appear down here as well. And you can select whichever list you prefer to work from. I prefer to select this little list from here. And we can see things like I could power off the machine. It's actually running at the moment. We can clear the LEDs, for example, that uh, highlight the fact if we've had a problem on a machine. And a whole bunch of other things, including uh, updating our uh, firmware on our machine directly here from the HMC. The normal operations is to click on a particular server. We only have one in the list here. But if we click on this server, we actually have a look at what's going on on the machine. Well, here's my eight-way machine. I have, I think it's, it says here, 16 logical partitions running. And at the bottom here, I have the, the two VIO servers. This list is in alphabetical order. This is the number of the uh, I. This is the ID of the logical partition. Then we have the uh, status in here, active or uh, running. The amount of CPU, the amount of memory it's using, which profile is involved here, what is actually running, a VIO server or AX Linux regular partition, and reference codes at the end here. We have a series of buttons across here that we can select particular things and we'll look at those in a minute. One thing is here, the environment and the reference code I'm not that interested in, so let's configure that now. Uh, the environment and reference code I'm not that interested in, but let's bring up the 
number of processors. If it's dedicated, it's the CPUs. If it's in a shared pool, then it's the uh, virtual processor number. Now, if I slide it over here, we can see how many CPUs are actually allocated to each of these logical partitions. Now, um, I actually keep in the name of my logical partition what operating system I'm actually running. It's because this is largely a crash and burn demo machine and it's easy for me to forget. And we find one here though that uh, is not active and I've forgotten to put the operating system in here. So let's uh, select that. And we can activate it. So you got one profile. We'll open the terminal manually. Let's just get it going. There we go. We see it's in the running state. Let's actually uh, watch that uh, boot up. If we go down here to console window. We can open a window. Uh, warning messages that uh, Internet Explorer lights out between. Okay, it's actually up and running already. So I'll log in. And if we do a lowest level, we'll find out what we got here. So it's AX 5.3 maintenance for 5. Let's go in here and edit this logical partition. I'll just make a note here. We can look around the logical partition as we could with the uh, older style. Number of CPUs is uncapped, it's assigned a quarter, can go up to two. Memory, got one gigabyte at the moment. IO hasn't got uh, any at all. It's got virtual adapters in here, it's got Ethernet and SCSI. And there's the other settings that you were familiar with. So, we'll OK, that to change its name. Okay, now if you wanted to look at the profiles, we do this in a slightly different way. If we look down to configuration, we can see manage profiles. That brings us up a sub panel that we can use to look at the various profiles we have set up. At the moment, there's only one here, so we can select it. We go to actions, and we can make a copy of it or edit it. We can also create a new one here if we've got nothing selected. So we have the details now for this normal profile and it's all the regular details that we, uh, we've seen before. We'll leave those as they are. Ooh, everything seems to be working. Now this machine isn't too large, but um, if we had lots and lots of more logical partitions, we'd have difficulty finding things in here. But we can do some extra things in here, for example, filtering and uh, ordering our logical partitions. In here we can select what name, what order we want things in. Um, for example, we might just say how many processing units um, ascending. Let's do descending, so the bigger ones at the top. And we can look at memory perhaps uh, descending and reorder our logical partitions based on the order. I guess the 
bigger logical partitions would be the more important ones. So now we find the ones here with half a CPU at the top and one gigabyte of memory at the top running down. So we can see the important ones here. We can switch those off at any time by clicking this button. We're back to our ordered list which happens to be alphabetical on logical partition name. Some of the other things we can do with a logical partition, we can look at its properties, can't change them in here but we can see what's going on. We can, this is running so we can restart it or shut it down or clear those LEDs again like we could do for the whole machine but this time for a logical partition. We can find out more information about our adapters and the virtual SCSI, virtual ethernet. This is how we do the logical partitioning dynamic changes. This is done in a slightly different way but I think it makes more sense. Look at how to dynamically change our CPU. In here this is what it's currently set to and rather than adding another quarter we just set it to what we actually want and click OK. We'll see this change in a second or two. So the other things down here we can look at the serviceable events and history of the particular logical partition. Over here, this is one particular machine, and we've only got one in a, a sample machine here, but we could look at all partitions. In this case it doesn't actually change very much, but if we had a lot of different machines we're managing, we could look at all of the partitions at the same time, and then we could use our sort and group functions up here to actually select the ones we want. We can actually name particular partitions, perhaps we could create a new custom group that just looks at the logical partitions that are doing something that I'm interested in, perhaps the database servers or just the web servers, and we could get a view of what's happening with those and looking at how to control those. Back to the HMC side of things, we have a HMC management panel. It's a lot more descriptive on what it actually does and how to configure things in here. Much of the same sort of events, but I think it's slightly better organized than the HMC6 way of doing things. One thing that I do encourage is people to actually create their own login IDs on the HMC and they log in as themselves rather than everybody using HSC root. The reason for that is we can actually look at who's logged in on this particular HMC and if necessary we can knock them out. So here we can see, it's stretched down a little bit here, that HS, HSC root is logged in actually at the console. If I scroll it over here we can see that was five hours and five days and twenty hours ago. So we can actually click on here and log that person off. There we go. And if we have lots of people logging in this HSC route, we can't determine which session is which. We also see that people have things actually running. I opened uh, an, a terminal window to a particular logical partition. You can see that here, that's still running. And I'm using the manage user tasks, that's where I actually got running uh, here at the top. If we all log in as the same thing, then we can't actually determine which one session is which. It also means we have a, an ability to actually disconnect from our HMC and reconnect and come back to exactly where we were. If we left something running, they will continue to run and we can reconnect to them, which is a great asset. But again, we, that only really works if people are logging in as different people. Going further down this list, we can look at service management, we can have a look at how we control our machines and looking at uh, problems or events happening on a machine. If we go into manage serviceable events, it'll ask us do we want to select, let's just have a look at everything. And somebody uh, a week or so ago removed a machine from this HMC and so we have a whole series of events in here. Some of these we can recognize, here's that AC, that's a power being removed. And it 
to tell us more information about that directly and we can go and select in things in here and um, decide to uh, clear those uh, particular events once we're finished dealing with them if we look into updates here this is how we can now update our machines immediately says what level of HMC we've got available here and to go and update it I think I've got the uh, very latest version we updated it I think last Friday and here's my machine and again I think we're uh, on a very recent level so we've got nothing to worry about but we can uh, again select here and take various tasks to actually update our machines directly and finally if we go back to look at system plans very powerful feature for very clearly documenting your systems we have one here, it's actually from the machine that was disconnected we can create them down here or we can select one and kind of have a look just going to check who I am and here we have the, the system plan with lots of details in here about it set up so here's a writing scripts to document all this we can just save this on another machine I don't think we had many partitions set up here, so this one's quite small. But I have all the details, including nice diagrams of the machine and the resource numbers connected to each of them. Excellent way of documenting how your machine is actually set up, not how you think it's set up. Well, that was a very quick fly past all the major functions inside the new HMC7. Just a reminder, this is for Power 6 machines, it's mandatory, but we can control still our Power 5 based machines as well. It's a nice web browser interface, we don't need to install stuff onto our workstations. Simpler to use, and I think it's uh, easier to use, and it's quite a bit quicker than the old WebSM based way of looking at a HMC. One thing I didn't cover, we can actually start new tasks while something's actually off and running. That can increase our productivity too. And we can disconnect and reconnect our sessions, which saves us time setting up things the way we like them.